Sharon Sales Belton, Vice President for Government Affairs and Community Relations at Thompson Reuters. And I have a special guest today, Mahesh Ragaswamy. Thank you, Sharon. Who is the Senior Director of Global Justice Programs. Global Justice Programs uh, here at Thompson. And I got to tell you that it's a pleasure to work with him. The amount of energy that you bring to uh, your job and your um, and your commitment to you. help Thompson Reuters uh, build out this uh, eco justice system um, is infectious. I mean, Thank we're you. we're Thank really you. all impressed by the things that you're doing. Thank you, Sharon. I think there's a lot more to be done, and you know, as as a company, I think there's a lot of opportunity for us to do the right thing for the justice community, and uh, our assets and our relationships can definitely go a long way to help countries really move forward as they start implementing the rule of law initiatives. So my understanding is that you've got a lot of experience working in the, um, in the justice system. And, um, and because your job is global, yeah. um, I also know that um, other countries around the world don't have as sophisticated system as you might find in a developed country. Sure. What does that gap look like? It can be significant. Um, and, and it's surprising that you said that, you know, the developed countries have good systems, and I would sort of challenge that because mm -hmm. I don't really think so. Ah. I don't really think so. We, we'd like to believe so. Okay. Uh, the, the gaps exist here as well. Um, U.S., U.K. are markets that we currently serve, and um, the paper trolleys exist in the courts in our country, too. So it's the same problem. It's just that we have, we're probably about 15, 20 years ahead in terms of implementing certain technologies and putting in... Um, from a judicial standpoint, putting in the measures, the, that's the difference. So, when you look at the developed countries, so what, what, how, what, what is our focus with the developed countries? I mean, you said some of our systems are still, you know, paper-based. You know, they're not efficient. You know, we've got, you know, problems with our records. Sure. You know, sure. the quality of our records too. So, what's your strategy with developed countries, and how is that different? You know, with the underdeveloped countries. Uh, I would, I would quote Lawyers Without Borders, an initiative that you're working um, on very closely, and um, education. That okay. would be the first sort of thing that we need to do, getting access to information to the citizens and the corporations that are dealing with the government. And then second thing, of course, be able to give them the bare essentials. They don't need a Rolls Royce. Let's give them a car. Let's get them moving. That's sort of our focus. So we're really keen on giving them sort of a minimum viable product that is going to get them from where they are, capture information, be able to measure what they're doing, and get better at that before we open up the floodgates. I actually take a lot of pride in the idea uh, that uh, Thomson Reuters can play a lead role in helping to build models for good governance uh, in developing countries uh, around the world. And it's not that they don't have you know, systems and it isn't that they don't have a vision for what sure, they sure. want to accomplish, but the tools, they need definitely. some new tools. Absolutely, they, they definitely need the new tools. And, and it's the bite-sized approach at the end of the day uh, that we have really started focusing on and believing in because the Big Bang never works. The Big Bang never works here in the U.S. and the developing countries either. So let's pick off one or two small things that we can solve for them, show the value, and then let them, let them come back to us and ask, okay, what else can you solve for us? So I have one last question. All right, so I was, at, I was talking to somebody from Uganda, and uh, they were talking to me about the fact that um, there wasn't consistency in mm -hmm. access uh, to electricity. Sure. And because there wasn't consistency with, with regard to access to electricity, there's some problems associated with getting information to the citizens and also just some sure. functional problems right. uh, in conducting a business. How do we get around all of that? I mean, is it, is, are our solutions cloud-based? Um, what what's our strategy to um, respond to the fact that the infrastructure Does is so dissimilar to what right. we have? It's inconsistent. What do we do? So it's, it's preparing to leapfrog the entire copper wire yeah. situation, right? Africa is a great example. They're conducting e-commerce over text-based cell phones today. Can, what are we going to do to become part of that revolution? Right. That's what our answer needs right. to be. And we are thinking about that. Okay, we're, good. We're saying how can we allow people access to 
the legal information and how can we help them resolve disputes without having to travel 400 miles right. to resolve conflicts. And, and I think we have the solutions to solve that. And the PAN-TR initiatives with TRTA, legal, and IP and science, there's some brilliant people in this company, and we're pretty close to solving those issues. I just think that's wonderful and uh, kind of gives me a little bit of goosebumps, <laughs> you know, thinking about all of the possibilities sure. because we're really trying to take into consideration the reality, you know, of the circumstances, right. Right. and then our innovation and our agility yeah and you know trying to bring that to the market in a way that's going to make a difference Definitely. let me close with just one um one bit of information and maybe i'll ask you to respond to it we were at a, a meeting and somebody was telling us that um 40 percent of the population of the people living on the continent of africa were under the age of 15. and uh, that this is uh, an important issue oh that we gosh. need to that all of us around oh, yeah. the world need to um, need to understand and pay some attention to. When you hear something like that, what does that what does that say to you? What does their, that mean to you? Their expectations of what the world is going to be is completely different from what it is today. Yes. So let's get our act together now. Is basically what that tells me. Yes. The, um, yeah. The, all everything that we know is going to get turned on its head when that population starts demanding things of the world. Yes, and I see those numbers, and I think opportunity absolutely 100 percent let them let them help us innovate let them be the disruptive force yes. that is going to force us to bring new solutions and capabilities and i want all of them to know the name thompson Rogers. absolutely you got that right <laughs> thank you thank you thank you sharon <laughs>